So every talk needs a structure, and this is how this talk's gonna go. I'm gonna complain for about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm gonna have a good moan, I'm gonna complain about everything I can think about, and then for the rest of the talk, Jules is gonna solve all of our problems. Okay, so I'm, I'm not gonna complain about build packs, because I love build packs. Does everyone love build packs? Woo. Yes, I love being able to do CF push and just worry about you know, my app code and not have to care about shell shock and heartbleed and sudo and all that kind of stuff. Build packs are fantastic, they're, they're one of the best things. I am gonna complain about writing build packs. Who here has written a build pack? You are heroes. <laughs> that, that's, that's fantastic. Did, did you enjoy the experience? I tried to write a build pack once. Does forcing a public source build pack count? Sure. I, your question answers itself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tried to write a build pack once. Because I'm an enormous beardy hipster, I tried to write a build pack for Haskell. Everyone loves Haskell, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the many beautiful things about Haskell uh, it's, it's a lesser known thing, but it, it, it's fantastic. One of the many beautiful things about Haskell is that it's impossible to get an integer overflow using your basic integer type in Haskell. The, the Haskell language, you know, the, there's no such thing on the default integer type as maxint. So the language is completely happy. If you want to write a program that calculates a single number that fills the whole memory of your computer, the language is like, fine, you do that, that's great. Okay, and this, this is brilliant. You know, this, this means you never have to worry about it when you're reasoning about your programs, and that's fantastic. Um, in order to do this, the Haskell compiler needs to rely on, on a library, a C library called libgmp, which is an arbitrary precision math library, right? So when I wanna run my, uh, my Haskell compiler, I'm gonna need libgmp to be there. And then the Haskell compiler is gonna produce a binary, and that binary is gonna be dynamically linked to, linked to libgmp, because the integers in it, you know, they're, they're a data structure provided by libgmp. Okay, so I'm gonna need libgmp to be in wherever it is that my build pack runs and you know, does the compilation, and I'm also gonna need it to be wherever my app runs you know, all of the many millions of instances of my app, right? So I'm gonna need it to be in both places. Now, fortunately, there is a place that exists, there's a thing that exists in both places. There's, there's the root FS, we call it at the bottom there, right? So you, the, the CF Linux FS. Uh, so what do you think? Is libgmp in the CF Linux root FS? Uh, of course it's not. And. And this sucks, and it sucks that I even have to know what a CF Linux root FS is in order to write a thing that compiles a Haskell program, right? But, but okay, it's probably not as bad as all of that. I can just, I can work around it somehow while I'm writing my build pack. Okay, so what am I gonna have to do? Well, remember that I'm an enormous hipster, so I'm not gonna write an offline build pack because I'm just always online. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna w get my library. I'm just gonna get it from the internet somewhere. You know, th this, this thing only has to work once. Um, once I've got my library, what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna have to copy it into the droplet there. Does everyone know what a droplet is? Yeah, it's a tiny piece of a cloud. It's very clever. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy my, my library into my droplet there because I need that to, to be there when my, when my app is running. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with the LD library path because I'm gonna to need to be able to, to access this library when I run my compiler fine. So now I'm gonna go get my compiler and that's great. Once I've gotten my compiler, now I can compile a binary and that's fantastic. Now I've done my job. All I have to do is stick the binary into the droplet dir and I'm done, right? Except that I forgot that the binary needs to be called with the LD library path magic that I just did, right? So I can't, I can't just put the binary in the droplet there and make it work. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to wrap it in some kind of shell script, so okay, let's start doing that. Uh, and the shell script is gonna have to have this kind of, this magic, but it's gonna have to be a subtly different magic for the LD library path than the previous thing, because the droplet there appears in two different relative locations, depending on whether I'm actually in the build pack or whether I'm you know, in the droplet and running the thing. Okay, so I need to do that. And then I can call the binary and I have to remember to pass all the arguments along, otherwise bad things will happen. Uh, and now I'm done. 
All right, so that, that, that wasn't so bad at all, right? That, that was fine. All right, but at least, oh yeah, remember what I wanted to do, what I really wanted to do instead of all of that stuff is I wanted to get a compiler, compile a program, put the program in the place where I'm going to run it, done, right? That's what I wanted. What I actually did was all of, yeah. Okay. So, so that's... That, that, that kind of sucks, but at least what I've done now, that's the end of the problem, right? I, I did the work as the build pack author. I was a hero just like you folks who've written build packs, right? I did it, and now no one else ever has to worry about it ever again. Except for the performance implications of what I just did. So. So it's slow. What, in, how, how is it slow? Um, this, th this library that I got, right, that's now in, in the droplet. And that droplet, I need to download it for in, into, into every Diego cell that's ever going to run my app, right? So I'm going to download it over and over again, and I can't cache it anywhere, right? And Maybe for one little C library like this, that's not such a problem. But if I were writing a Java build pack, then what we're talking about is the JVM, right? We're talking about whole language runtimes that you download over and over again every time you scale your app up, right? And what's worse is after you've downloaded it, well, what the droplet is is it's a tarball. So now you've got to extract that tarball. And you've got to do it for every container that you spin up, every, every instance. And what's even worse than that is that you're extracting it onto a layered file system, which you know, has its own performance implications. That's, that, that, that's slow. That's, that, that's, we're, 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 making, we're making every app instance pay. All right. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm almost done complaining now. That, that, that's basically it. Jules is just about to solve all of our problems. But because this is CF Summit and we're all moral upstanding people, we're going to give him an opportunity to get some bonus points. And the bonus points are if he solves our problems using open standards, because we care about open standards here. OK. So, so here's what we want. Here's, here's the goal. Uh, I want to be able to do this. I don't want to have to do that, that crazy business that I did before with the LD library path and all that stuff. I just want to get my compiler, compile my thing, and copy it into a place. And on top of that, I want it to be a whole lot faster than it is right now. And I want to make use of this OCI standard that we keep talking about in Garden and Diego and all this kind of business. All right. Fix it. OK. So everyone, so everyone now hates uh, build packs. Uh, so we've succeeded. Um, but we remember that we love like, the build pack model, right? But we want to just make it faster, use open standards. Um, maybe knock some of the edges off. So let's talk about how staging works today, right? How does Cloud Foundry work today? Um, this is going to get technical, um, but I have pictures. <laughs> so you have myapp.code, right? So a bit of code. How does that work today? We stage that. Let's look inside the staging process, right? How do we do that staging? Well, if we zoom in, right, you have this droplet. You have this build pack, right? And the build pack runs on your code, right? And then it puts the outputs of staging into a directory. Um, I call that dropletizing, right? Um, and then we take that tar file, right, the result in that directory, and we put it off somewhere into a, a, a blob store, right? That, we call that a droplet, right? And then to run that, what do we do? Uh, we create a new container, right, from a root file system, and we tar that back in, right? So we re-untar that whole droplet right into the thing, right? So that's a copy of that thing, which may have a big JVM in it. Um, and then we run it. We run app run or whatever its script is, right? This animations are super slow. They need to use OCI images. <laughs> uh, so then we just keep doing that again and again and again, right? So if you have multiple um, instances, we have to re-extract 
uh, that droplet with the whole JVM in it again and again and again. So um, tar files, it's no metadata, they're just a tar file. We keep extracting them again and again and again, and you're limited to this one directory and you can't run as roots, right? Because we have to have everything end up in this one directory because we're doing everything with tar files, right? So layered images, right? This is this technology. Docker has hugely popularized this technology. It's an extremely powerful technology. Um, and we actually have open standards around this technology now. We've got uh, the OCI image spec. So instead of using tar files, we have this way of describing a set of layers which can be added on top of each other. So you can have a layer which represents maybe a base root FS, like Ubuntu, um, a layer maybe with the, the, the difference to add Go to that base root FS, maybe a layer for like code or something, right? Um, and you can just describe that in an image. It might look something like this, uh, my app image, right? Got a base layer, Ubuntu, some Go code, and then maybe your app on top, right? And all of the things in yellow most of the things can share, right? Lots of things will be reusing those things. And your bit is just the, the purple bit on the top, right? Um, so when I create a second um, uh, image, right, a second Go app somewhere else on the platform, we've got all those layers which are in common. You've got your one, which is different. We can just copy across those layers right there in a the cache um, and put yours on top. How does that work? Well, we have these layered file systems which do copy on write, right? So I can create a directory that's a copy of an existing directory, um, and I can just do that instantly, and I can use that to put these layers on top of each other very quickly, right? So I put your app on top. We Okay, so what would this look like if we use this for staging, right? Well, we could, instead of having that build pack step and then the dropletize step, we could just run the build pack, and then we throw the result out as an image, right? So an image that describes exactly what I want at runtime. So as the whole flexibility of OCI images, and we get rid of the tar files. And so we run it, we just run that image, right? Which, and that could be a Docker format image, could be an OCI format image, it doesn't really matter, right? So the interesting thing is, we already support running Docker images on Cloud Foundry, right? We already support the run step of this, but we also have this other run step which happens if you staged with a droplet, right? So depending on whether you staged from a, uh, an image or from a droplet, we either replace the whole root FS, right, get the whole state of your container from the image and run it, or we get this standard root file system and untar your stuff. Well, actually, all we need to do to make this work is we kill that step. We get rid of that step, right? And now, everything we run in the platform, we run from OCI images. How does that work? Well, actually, we then just have two ways of producing those OCI images, right? You've got the way people use today, right? Docker files to create those images. Right, I can run that Docker file, create an image, ship it up, or I can use build packs, right? I can have that whole library of maintained things that know how to convert my code into an image that someone else is going to patch and do all that stuff with, and it also creates an image. So you end up with a completely standard way to run things and just multiple ways to create these shippable images. So no tarring, right? Standards all the way. And we can actually start to think about relaxing some of those restrictions. We might not initially, because we might want to keep the user experience the same, but we'd no longer be forced to have restrictions like not running as roots or being limited to a specific directory. So that'd be pretty cool, right? Now, some of you are probably thinking there are some problems with this. And I think I can name the three top problems. There, what about patching? probably with exclamation marks. What about existing build packs? And then probably what about patching again, because you just thought about that again, but like louder, right? So what happens when we need to patch one of these things, right? Because one of the great things the Cloud Foundry platform gives you with build packs is we can take care of all of that. We just roll a new root file system out, put your droplet back on top, and everything works, right? That's how it works today. 
because these are separate, right? Because we've got the droplet and the root file system, we can put a new version of the root file system, re-extract, and we're all patched and up to date. Well, okay, what happens when Ubuntu 14.04 goes bad? Okay, have to patch it. So, what do I do? Well, actually, an image is a thing with a GUID, right? And it's a set of layers. If I want to create a new image with the patched version of Ubuntu, right? So, okay, I've got a new image with a patched version of Ubuntu, and I want the image that has your code on top, I can actually quite easily create that image, right? I've just created a new image. It's got your code on the top level, on the top layer, and it describes what I want that patched application container to look like. You might be thinking this doesn't work, but what I'd like to suggest is this is exactly what we're doing today, because actually untarring the droplet on the new rootfs is exactly the same as what this OCI image instructs the container engine to do, right? Let's take this set of, this new set of layers and place this tar file back on top, right? And as long as you maintain the build pack contract, so the build pack's guaranteeing that it's gonna set up the files that it's made so that it can still patch, we can still make the same guarantees about patching, but now we can do them in the platform so you can control when you do and don't want to patch those things. So maybe you have a production environment where we shouldn't do that patching automatically. We can now do that because it's no longer a side effect of the Bosch deploy. It's something that we choose to do at the high level and roll out, right? Um, so I just run that, I've got my new container, and it's all patched. So what would this mean, right? Well, we get all the power of build packs, right? You still have all this nice maintained functionality. You don't have to worry about writing your own Docker files, doing all that stuff. You still get all the patching that we had before, right? But we no longer pay the price of copying these tar files all around, re-extracting them. And we can start to think about relaxing or changing some of the build pack contracts because we're now choosing to have this contract even though the technology allows us to do more things. OCI images throughout. Um, there are still edges that there's still things we have to figure out. So we still want to make sure that we can put out a new root FS uh, in a way that we're confident we can keep everyone secure and up to date, right? That's important. Um, but at least you're not going to have to use Docker files when you want to do um, uh, a Haskell build pack, right? Uh, today, we have a lot of times where people get frustrated with doing it and they go, oh, well, let's just run it as a Docker file, right? This should avoid that. We can actually start to, to make build packs a supercharged way of writing images, um, and then you can use whatever you like and the platform works consistently. So where are we with this? Well, it's still not definitely happening, but um, we are putting our feet in the water already. So we have a couple of stories in Garden's backlog um, to try out the first couple of steps. Um, we're running some experiments to see if we can actually prove the performance gains that we think we're going to have. Um, we put a proposal to CFDev for the work, so you can see much more details with words and details and how all this actually works in practice and how we think we can get there. Um, feedback is very, very useful for us because this is, although I think it's a very good idea, it's a lot of work. Um, and so we, we need feedback on whether this is something that, that you think will help with your use cases and is important um, or not to be able to justify the work that we want to do on this. Um, and with that, um, we have intentionally less time for you to ask us any questions. Um, so we would happily answer any questions, apart from from Doug. Doug. So I love the idea of replacing build pack, I'm sorry, using build packs to the equivalent of a Docker file project. I love that idea, I love OCI. Two things that pop in my mind. You're, the way you presented it, you're just kind of assuming that the environment which you compile is the same environment you want to run. Yep. And that may not necessarily be true in the sense that you don't need to compile anymore when you run. Yeah. You talk about how you may sort of remove the extra core, right? Right. I think you're going to address that problem. Well, right, so um, we're, we're thinking of this in two steps. So the first step is let's keep the exact same build pack model, but just do it based on OCI images. So in the first step, nothing changes, right? You still have droplets exactly where they are, um, and that's why we know we can still patch them in the exact same way. 
It's just instead of it being a droplet with a JVM inside, we can start having file system layers and caching stuff. Um, that then, I think, opens us up to start thinking about ways we can change that UX a little bit. Um, so, for example, one thing we've been discussing um, is you could have in your bin release file, in your build pack, you could name a set of dependencies which you'd like us to make sure are in the final image, right? Um, and that doesn't, that means we don't have to have them all already in the one Uber Franken root FS that everything has to have, but you can opt into having it and then we can potentially even keep that patched. So you can say, I want Haskell, right? Or I want the JVM. And we keep that layer there for you and patch it for you and keep putting your code on top. So that might be a way that we can um, let people um, do some things that are hard today, like getting Haskell, because they can just say, I, I want the dev file, for, uh, right? I want Haskell from the maintained repository without needing to put it in a root FS and without needing to complicate the existing build pack contracts. Um, so that's just one idea. Um, but I, th I think a lot of the value is we can first make it faster, and then we can set ourselves up to start experimenting with ways to relax some of the existing contracts and maybe make some of these things easier. That jumped out to me was this notion of swapping out lower layers when OCI elements scared the bejeebers out of me. Because in a general sense, a lot of times when you install the higher layer, the, the, the steps you take to install the higher layer is based very much on the lower layer. Right. So th this, so I should say, this only works with the build pack contract because right. we keep the build pack contract yeah, so the same. We know it's safe, really right? Exactly. Right. It only it only works as long as it's equivalent to doing the untar, right? right? Um, as you relax it, the build pack. This only works if the build pack designs itself in a way that they can make that guarantee. But actually, as long as the build pack designs itself in a way that it can make that guarantee, you can actually do this. Uh, and you still get all the power and all the patching as long as it does this. So, what, what's kind of the idea? Where would you put these uh, uh, images? Did, would you swap out the blob store for like a Docker registry or a registry of some sort? Um, so, in in our in the plan that we have at the moment, what we want to do to start with is we don't actually change anything. So, we have the droplets where they are essentially and the root FS um, where it is, although we might pull the root FS into a blob store. Um, and then we generate the OCI images. Right? So we generate an image that names the root FS and names the droplet. So the droplet's already a tar file. Right? The droplet is already in the format that you want a layer to look like. So we can actually just keep that where it is and just basically refer to that um, and just do a little proxying translation to actually create those images. Um, once you have that in place, then maybe you start to think about more complex things if you want to have multiple layers um, and other things. But because we want to keep the patching in there, we don't necessarily want to use like one of the registries that's out there because then we'd have to like go and update each of the images if you want to do the patching. So we think it's actually better for us to generate the image and use it as a communication format. Um, but it's sort of CGI, if you like, right? We're not, there's not actually an image. There's a, a thing that we generate as the here's the latest version um, of your app, right? There's a, a URL which gives you, here's the current patch version of this app um, that we can then schedule around, if you see what I mean. We have four minutes. They are now yours. Thank you very much. Thank you.